Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I would like to talk about this, you know, big event of this peace contract between UAE and Israel that has taken place. Who are the people behind this? Are Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's teacher. You would be surprised, and I have talked about this before in my talks about Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. I've done two talks in which I've talked in detail about his thinking and the way he thinks. We're going to go into a little bit of that. But you have to understand that it was Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's teacher that signed off on the fatwa that allowed this normalization to take place between UAE and Israel. Okay? This is the Emirates Fatwa Council. This is Sheikh Abdullah bin Bay. The Emirates Fatwa Council hails the UAE Israel Peace Treaty, which will further promote peace and tolerance in the region and the world. Now, remember this. This is very important. Peace. Peace and tolerance. Okay? Because I'm not. I cannot say who's munafiq, who's not munafiq. But I can tell you that there are certain actions the Quran tells us that seem to be of the munafiqin. Okay. So let us continue. Uh, this is Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, who is the teacher of Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. This is his website. Even though in here they have not posted the fatwa yet. But they have in the government sites of UAE, which I will show you shortly, inshallah. So this, you know, is the uh, teacher of uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf sitting here together with his teacher. His teacher is in the front and that's Sheikh Hamza Yusuf right before you. And this is the website of the Emirates, the Emirates News Agency and international treaties relations rightful authority of sovereign ruler the fatwa talks about the idea of the sovereign ruler being in authority to do this for the interest of his country okay and uh, and then this is the fatwa here okay i'm not going to read the whole fatwa but just parts of it the emirates fatwa council has commended as right and proper the good offices undertaken by the UAE leadership that have led to Israel's suspension of declaring sovereignty over areas of Palestinian territories. By the way, this is a lie. And I will show you that this, this idea that, oh, we're not going to go into Palestine anymore because we, we have a peace agreement with UAE. I've already talked about one aspect from a religious perspective that's already in their books. They're waiting for a prophet that will defeat the Arabs. And the Quran talks about that this is the Prophet who Alladhi Arsala Rasulahu Bil Huda wa Deen al Haq Liudhirahu ala Dini. This is the messenger that would come and dominate the Deen of Allah amongst the Arabs, right? Who Alladhi Wasaf al Ummiyin Rasula Minhum. He is the one who is sent a messenger amongst the Arabs. And this is the messenger that came amongst the Arabs and dominated the Arabs. He's already come and he's already gone. Now when the false Messiah comes, he's going to have to do this over again. And this is in their books and I talked about this in my last talk. But over here what I want to talk about is that the idea that uh, they're not going to annex Palestine, that's completely false from a factual perspective, which I'm going to show you what the, uh, what the actual... Uh, actual agreement was we won't do it now that was the agreement and I'll show that to you in just a little bit okay now given that the supreme interest is the de jure de jure means is that it is the it's a recognized law it's it's an it's known it is a fact whether people practice it or not it's a recognized law that's what de jure means okay given that the supreme interest is the de jure uh, detriment of acts taken by the sovereign ruler, okay, meaning the sovereign, the king, okay, and I'm going to talk about Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and kings and sheikhdoms and, and these monarchies and his relationship with them, okay, which is very, very troubling to me. Uh, by the sovereign ruler who is the only one that can determine the nation's supreme interests and responsibilities in relationship to, in relation to war and peace. 
and relations between nations, the Emirates Fatwa Council blesses the wise leadership's acts to the supreme good for the nation and its people. Now, dear brothers and dear sisters, this is what is called ulama as-salatin. Let me be very clear about this. This is what we call the ulama that serve the salatin. The ulama that serve the salatin. The ulama that serve the shaitan. Seriously, I'm not even joking about this. And I'm going to like, just just wait till you see what I have to say, okay? So this is the fatwa that the king knows what's in the best interest and if it's in the best interest to have peace relationships with Israel regardless of any other conditions, regardless of wala ul-bara, who the Muslims, that Muslims do not choose uh, alliances that are anti-Islamic on against uh, alliances that are against Muslims, meaning Israel is working against Muslims. They are... Everybody in the world, everybody in the world, Jimmy Carter's book, all the biggest jail in the world, everybody knows Israel is a, uh, is a, um, is a terrorist. Israel is the biggest bully on earth. Okay. Israel, uh, is uh, the, the, the oppression that Israel is doing. And to say, oh, we'll just have normal relationships with you. Yeah, I'll tell you why they're having normal relationships with them in just a little bit, okay? Let me first show you one verse of the Qur'an, which is suffice as far as what I'm trying to say. بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ This is, by the way, in the beginning of Sutul Baqarah. This is ayah number 11. Very beginning. It, after talking about the believers, أَلَفْ لَا مِمْ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ this first five ayahs, then it talks about two ayahs about the disbelievers. Inna ladina kafaru. Sawa'un alayhim a'anzarutahum am lam tundirum la yu'minun. Then over here, ayah number 11. Wa idha qila lahum, and when it is said to them, la tufsidu fil ard, don't cause fasad in the world. Qalu, they say what? Inna ma nahnu muslihun. We're just making things peaceful. We're making things right. We are reformers. We are the ones who understand what needs to be done. You are the ones causing the fitna. We are the ones that want peace. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُسْلِحُونَ They say, we're the ones making things right. Ala means beware. Beware. Or it means let it be known. إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ الْمُفْسِدُونَ No! They are the ones causing corruption. وَلَكِنْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ But their state of being is that they don't even perceive it. They don't even realize it. They don't even see it. And then they look at those believers that say, huh? Oh, why are you making peace with the, the, the oppressors of the world? Right? وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ And when it is said to them, why don't you believe like those people who believe that have always said that this is wrong? قَالُوا إِنَّا نُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ سُفَهَا Should we believe like the fools? These fools who never made peace with Israel? Who have preferred morality over practicality? أَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ سُفَهَا أَلَا let it be known. They are the fools. But they don't perceive it. And then what happens? You know, because these big celebrities who sit with politicians, which I'm going to talk about. When they say, when it is said to them, you should believe. Why are you not believing like everyone else believes? They say, we believe. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ And when they're empty with their shayateen, when they're alone with their shayateen, when they're there with the leaders, just alone between them, قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَاكُمْ No, 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 we're with you. إِنَّا مَا نَحْنُ مُسْتَحْزِئُونَ We just, you know, go along with what they're saying in a mockingly way, you know, we just take them in a lighthearted way. And so, you'll see what happens 
as a result. I'm going to show that to you, what happens as a result. Okay. By the way, Bismillah, I'm uh, going to start this Arabic class. Maybe a lot of you know it. I'm going to have a link of this in the description. And you can click here if you want to pay for it. But you can go and look at the details of this Arabic class. We will be studying Islamic eschatology using Surah Al-Kahf. And we will be studying Arabic language, how to understand the Quran. Every Muslim should be able to appreciate and read Quran without a translation. That is the minimum you need to be able to do in these times. Okay, So, you know, you can go over what the class is all about. Look at this link. And if you're interested, then join us. Jazakumullah khairan. Okay, so now... Let us go back to this verses of the Quran. So, what happens as a result? The double speak of Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and Abdullah bin Ubayya. Hamza Yusuf and Abdullah bin Ubayya are playing a major role in legitimizing the UAE's uh, actions around the world. When was this written? 2018. 2018 it was written. You see... Anything Islamic that's happening in UAE is happening via Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and his teacher. So, what is going on? The Sheikh was a member of the cabinet. This is Sheikh uh, Hamza Yusuf's teacher. Okay, he was a member of the cabinet, permanent member of the committee of Mauritania's People's Party, then the ruling party for eight years. Afterwards, he took on a number of posts, rising to the level of a minister on three occasions. His son, uh, Sheikh Hana bin Bayya, who manages his father's communications, didn't fall far, far from the tree. In the years forum, his biography introduces him as a politician. This is uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's uh, teacher's son, standing with Ivanka Trump, the daughter of Donald Trump, and him standing there. And this is the two sitting together and, you know, standing together and talking about, obviously, politics, okay? So, what is it that, uh, you know, treaties rightful authority of ruler, fatwa council says, okay? And, uh, you know, you can go again, you see Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and uh, Abdullah bin uh, Bayya there. And uh, let us go on so we can discuss UAE and Israel more than a marriage of convenience. Warming ties between the two countries largely rest on a shared vision over secularization of political Islam, meaning there should be no Islam. Basically, the agreement is no khilafa, no Islam. <coughs> okay, number one, they both agree on confronting Iran. Number two, uh, Abu Dhabi, Israel has long feared Muslim Brotherhood. The influence of Muslim Brotherhood, yani Muslim khilafa, somehow if Islam comes into the middle of everything, we don't want that. Even though Israel should be a religious state for the Jewish people, of course. But no Islam in the Middle East. That is the agreement. Hostility to Arab Spring in any shape or form that might give rise to, you know, Islam. The annexation pay plan, while far from finalized, fits into Kushner's one-state solution. Okay, so the one state, this is what they're, the, the deal of the century is going to happen regardless, okay? And then uh, let us look at uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and as far as Trump. We have too much work to do, not protesting, not lighting fires, not saying Trump is not my president. He is, and that is how the system works, says who? Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. By accepting the results and moving on, now we have to work to make sure our educational, political, and scientific institutions, some of the finest in the world, are protected and perfected. This is what Sheikh Hamza Yusuf says. That we have to protect the institutions, we have to accept Trump as our president, etc., etc., etc. Okay? So this is the attitude that he comes with. I have a whole video on this, allying with Sunni man monarchies and sheikhdoms, right? Like UAE, he's always on the side of the monarchs. He always speaks positively about the monarchs, especially in UAE. Trump's, Trump as God's servant, okay? He says, on again, authority. He's on the side of where is authority, okay? One, on keeping a recognition that we have a metaphysical lens. Okay, I'll tell you what's wrong with this whole statement before I even read it. What's wrong with this whole statement is that um, if I take a knife and kill someone, yes, metaphysically, 
Allah did it. Okay, I understand that. Allah, Allah, Allah allowed Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, allowed me to kill someone. So, he's basically saying, because Allah allowed me to kill someone, therefore, I should not be angry that it happened. I should not be upset it happened. I should look at everything from a metaphysical point of view. The metaphysical point of view is Allah allowed it to happen, so then you have to accept it, that it happened. Total, total, total hogwash. That's not how Muslims think. But he tries to make it look like that this is our traditional way of thinking. No, when it comes to realities between metaphysical and physical, we look at the zahir. We look at the obvious things. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anh, made this clear. That in the time of the Prophet, the ayat of Quran used to come down and we used to know who are the munafiqs and so on and so forth. We used to know the reality of things. But now that the no wahi is coming down, we'll look at the apparent things of, of people. So anyway, he says, Shaykh Hamza Yusuf, okay, on keeping a recognition that we have metaphysical lens, that we look at the world with and always seeing God behind these things. God is in charge. Trump is a servant of God, just like everyone else. He'll either serve with good or with evil, but he'll serve God. So it's important for us as people who want to aspire to be servants of good, to be that good in the world so that the other people can see that. I'm a deep believer in fitrah, in that principle of nature of human beings. The fitrah is good and we should allow people, even the worst people, to change. So he's talking about Trump. Our Prophet was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a great example of that. He allowed the worst people to change. Their hearts were melted by goodness. But not Abu Lahab, not Fir'aun. It wasn't Yani he's trying to apply the 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 principle that would apply to people in general with specific people that are that that it, not that Trump can't change, he can change, of course. But the thing is, is that you're justifying, you're justifying, you're justifying something that was not good with this type of rhetoric just to, I don't know, make who happy. I'm trying to figure that out still. Because I know Sheikh Hamza Yusuf knows better. Okay? Trump introduces the Muslim ban. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf says nothing. Okay? Banning the Muslim Brotherhood, by the way, UAE banned... Muslim Brotherhood also banned CARE in America. CARE is the largest Islamic organization for Islamic civil rights in America. That's all they do. Fight for the rights of the Muslims. But they were banned in UAE. Okay? So, uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, uh, you know, supports all that. Then, you know, this Abdullah uh, Bay'ah, the first person, this is, by the way, a Jewish newspaper. Okay? And uh, in this Jewish newspaper, Jewish News, it's called, the first person, a great miracle happened there, okay? And he's talking about the conferences that Sheikh Hamza Yusuf and his teacher have been having and what was a remarkable was addition invitations to Christians and Jewish leaders, clergy and scholars to attend, participate, and share in this form. Now, there is this thing that I'm very, very scared of, and it's called interfaith insanity. Interfaith insanity is this idea that, you know, well, we all believe in this similar thing, so therefore we're all equal. Okay, a perennialist thought. Because the jal will come and you'll fool everybody. And it's, if this perennialist thought ex goes everywhere, then, uh, you know, Muslims are going to be like, well, you know, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, they're kind of like all equal. No, they're not all equal. They're very different. And that's why there was a need for a new prophet. Because things had drastically changed. And shaitan had taken over the reins of a part of Christianity and Shaitan had taken over the reins of a large portion of Judaism which is Kabbalah and you know the Jesuits and the Christianity and so on and so forth so this thing that you know we all can sit together and we're all yes we need to do da'wah we don't need to do interfaith dialogue for the sole purpose of interfaith dialogue and appreciating the commonalities without looking at what makes us different this is not good for us this is not good by any means and we're the ones who come out losers at the end if we do that so you know the jewish people they even lighting the the uh, chanukah candles that they had Okay, the Jewish participation and contribution to this Muslim form for promoting peace is nothing less than a modern day miracle. 
he writes, this Jewish person who attended uh, this particular conference, okay? On theology of obedience, the analysis of Sheikh uh, bin Bay'ah and Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's political thought. Okay, I've given a whole lecture on this, but I'm just going to focus on a few aspects regarding this. That is why our ulama, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf says, traditionally were opposed to revolution. Imam Abu Hanifa gave the fatwa, you can have a revolution as long as you know you have a, the critical mass you need to bring it. He was not against it. Hussein radiallahu anh, the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, went for a revolution. Abdul, uh, Abdullah bin Muhammad, Muhammad who was, um, who was uh, favored by Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam Malik, uh, he went a did a, tried to do a revolution against the Umayyad Empire to bring back true pristine Islam. Okay, so this statement is not completely true. Okay, at least seven or eight times, specifically the family of the Prophet stood up against the Umayyads to bring back true Islam. But by the Ottomans, it was completely done. Even by the Abbasids, it was basically completely done. That's why our ulama traditionally were opposed to revolution. No, they were not opposed to revolution. Okay, but yes, they were opposed to creating a uh, facade in a, or a jihad that would turn into facade. Or a fight that would end up killing innocent people because they were monarchs. They had standing armies. They had, and the civilians, they couldn't do anything. Not because they thought oppression wasn't wrong or they were trying to keep the oppressors in power. They saw it from a metaphysical perspective first and foremost and that it was an ibtila from Allah. It was a test from Allah. This is true. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you don't work. This is one of the differences. We were under kingship and Kingship, you really can't do much. Like you can see in the Arab world, even though everybody wants Islam there, they can't bring Islam. But that doesn't mean that if you're not able to organize, form a jama'ah and overthrow the the kingship, uh, that you shouldn't do that. Uh, if you remove the metaphysics, then the world makes no sense at all. You can tear down everything. Actually, you know what? Yes, you are supposed to tear down the wrongs. That's the whole purpose of Amr bil Maruf Nain al Munkar, enjoining good, forbidding the wrong. Whoever sees something wrong, let him change it with his hands. Tear it down, dude. I mean, seriously. I mean, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, sometimes, with all the wisdom and knowledge he has that everybody in the world can appreciate, sometimes it says the most bizarre things. We do not accept rebellion against our leaders. This is what Sheikh Hamza Yusuf says. Or our public affairs, even, if they're oppressive. Okay, this is the aqidah of the Muslims, he says. If you are to tell me we have to go out against the government, and our salaf said, and they all agreed, even if they're oppressive, why did they put that in? The, because he knew people would say, we have been oppressed. This is talking about, and the Prophet gave conditions, he's talking about a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, basically, in which the Prophet says, don't rebel against the leaders as long as they pray. Do they pray? Do they really pray? Do they even attend Jummah? I mean, come on. When so this this whole thing that uh, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf has been doing, kings do not have the in in order to f talk about how good the idea of monarchy is and kingship is, and it is true. Political science says a compassionate king is probably the best type of leader. There's no doubt about it. Okay, but Sheikh Hamza Yusuf is doing this to support his stance in front of these kings and these sheikhs in the Arabian Peninsula. Kings do not have the susceptibility for corruption that a poor person or rich person does. Kings are not hungry. They have everything, so they do not need anything. If a king is good, he will raise his kids to be good. We have a great example in Morocco. The king in, I mean, I don't know where he comes up with these ideas. Oh, we have a great example in Morocco. Okay, the king in Morocco comes from a good, well-esteemed, clean family. He loves his people, and the people love him. I've seen the same thing with Al Saud. Okay, Al Saud. I've seen the same thing with Al Saud, the Saudi regime. Are you joking, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf? Wake up! I've seen the same thing with Al Saud, but they're often surrounded by bad people. He says. Okay, the Saud are good. No, what did the Prophet say? You are as your friends are. You are as your friends are. So you're, okay, anyway. In both cases, the Shaykhs used their position to argue over the theological framing of injustice rather than act on behalf of the community for reform. So in, in, in all cases, what they do is they say, okay, they're the leaders. You have to take the oppression. 
you have to obey the leaders no matter what they do you should take oppression this is dunya in akhirah you'll get you get all the utopian views you have but you don't have to change the evil here don't tear everything down the tear down everything is wrong okay and part of this what this leads to and why i'm going over this is it leads to this very situation we have now between israel and uae let's accept the way things are you know let's accept the wrong Let's accept it for what it is. Let's accept it for its practicality. Okay, UAE, become friend with Israel. There's no need to protest. Okay? So that, that's that's kind of like what's going on from a theological point of view. Okay? So, you know, they've even Egypt is involved in this. Okay? And uh, this is like in 2018, the Mufti has signed off on thousands of innocent people's lives. It was written by this, you know, uh, Sheikh about what he was doing in UAE, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, and so on and so forth. Anyway, Israel UAE normalized diplomatic relationships. Five things to know. Okay, what are the five things to know? So this is what Trump is the one, and this is also interesting. Like right? Trump is the one that kind of like introduced this whole thing. First Gulf state to normalize ties with Israel. Not the last, the first. Okay, delays, delays annexation of palestinian land not a full stop okay uh also kushner u.s will not approve israeli annex annexations for some time for some time this is al jazeera news okay for some time not not it's not a permanent thing it's you know this grandiose thing oh we signed a contract and now they're not going to annex palestine oh no that's just not true it's a hogwash it's not true okay and so i just want to remind everybody to look at the description or the comment section for more information about the arabic class and hope to see the fact that people would be interested inshallah and in actually you know more than just these videos actually learning the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, earlier this year netanyahu had announced he would annex one third of the already illegally occupied west bank including parts of the strategic jordan valley okay so after this, they said, okay, fine, we'll put a pause on this for now, okay? And they had to do that because of the elections in the U.S. and other reasons. The U.S. didn't want it, okay? Strategic military, uh, 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 Middle East agenda. israel UAE agreement will also pave the way for so-called strategic Middle East agenda, according to the joint statement, which will expand diplomatic trade and security, security, cooperation in the region. Along with this, the U.S., Israel, and UAE share a similar outlook regarding the threats and opportunities in the region. Basically, anti-Islamic and Islamophobia. These are the people who meet the leaders and say, hey, we're with you, we're not with the Muslims that we read about in the verse. Access to Muslim sites? Oh, big deal. Okay, I'll show you something about that in a second. And coronavirus vaccine, guys. Coronavirus vaccine. So UAE gets, uh, you know, Israel and UAE will immediately expand and accelerate cooperation regarding the treatment and development of a vaccine for coronavirus, a joint statement said. And so, you know, Netanyahu also says we'll join them in this. So then what happened as a result? Palestinian Mufti of Jerusalem posts some shocking fatwa. That is basically the Sheikh Muhammad Hassan announced today that it is forbidden for Emirate, uh, people from UAE, the Emiratis, to pray in the Al-Aqsa Mosque, according to fatwa he issued in 2012 against anyone who who uh, prints uh, with and reconciles with Israel. Okay, He added, since this Emirati-Israeli agreement bears the sign of normalization, so visiting Jerusalem is not allowed and forbidden. On the other hand, United Arab Emirates and Israel reached last Thursday a historic agreement to normalize diplomatic relationships between them under American, uh, you know, under the under the care of America. So while, you know, there is this braggadocio, this like big bragging and being arrogant that we did this and we're going to be the first ones to do this and we're going to have trade with Israel and Israel is the next, you know, Imran al-Bayt al-Maqtas, as the Prophet said, the building of, is, they see the building of Jerusalem. You see my videos on that. Okay, building of Jerusalem means the fall of Medina. That's what's going to happen. Okay, and it, UAE is just moving in that direction. It is moving in the direction of helping Jerusalem build and Medina fall. Okay, and so 
uh, what is the Islamic stance on such? A, I'm just gonna, you know, not spend too much time. But if there's any, there was a lady that said, for even the king Muslims, you know, the king Muslims, they weren't great Muslims, but they were king Muslims. When the king Muslim heard there is a lady in sin in Southeast Asia saying that my Khalifa will come and send an army of white horse to to protect me, right? The king sent the horses through Muhammad bin Qasim to protect her. Today, the oppressed is being helped. And the Prophet said, man, man Whoever walks with an oppressor, Shaykh Hamza Yusuf, listen. Whoever walks with an oppressor in order to strengthen him, to legitimize him. He's, he's left the fold of Islam because Islam does not require, does not, it does not demand, it demands that you don't do that, that you fight for the oppressed. You fight for bi ayyidham bin qutilat. For what reason have you killed this child girl? And so we have to be, you know, we live in strange, strange, strange times. And we're going to see many strange, strange, strange things. And one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life, that this man that I looked up to, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, listened to and and was so proud of him. I was so happy about him. I used to do dua for him. I used to watch some of his lectures over and over again. That this man has today betrayed Islam. This man has betrayed Islam. And this man has become arrogant. He has become arrogant. This Sheikh Hamza Yusuf is not the Hamza Yusuf before 9-11. May Allah give him guidance. May Allah give me guidance. Especially if I'm wrong. But I fear that I'm not wrong. And Allah knows best.